recall that we will multiply the likelihood times the prior. And let's write equations again. So this was our expression for the likelihood. This is our expression for the prior. Then the good news here is that the posterior is also a beta distribution. It's very friendly because you can see that the, the factors are really similar and they can be easily multiplied. In statistics, that is called conjugate priors. So let's put the expressions together. We can see that the posterior is going to be proportional to the likelihood times the prior. Note that I took out the constant terms in both equations. So if I am here omitting the marginal likelihood, so that's why I have a proportional instead of an equal. And we can easily develop this expression by putting together the thetas and the one minus theta and adding up the exponential parts. So if we normalize this term, because so far it's unnormalized, we obtain a proper beta distribution, actually, because it's exactly as the beta, we just are missing the normalization term. And remember that the normalization terms is one divided by the beta function. But in this case, the parameters are updated. Instead of having alpha one and alpha two, we now we are going to have n one plus alpha one and n zero plus alpha two. So this will be the final equation for our normalized posterior, another beta function with different parameters, where we are adding up the number of heads, the number of imaginary heads, the hyperparameter of the beta, and here the number of tails and the number of imaginary tails in the prior distribution, right? So that's why it is a beta with new parameters. Now plot everything, meaning like the likelihood, the prior and the posterior to see how the prior and the data affect the posterior distribution. So let's assume we're going to have a given number of heads in our history of flips. Remember that the sufficient statistics are the number of heads and number of tails. So then we don't need to track every single flip, right? So let's use for number of tails 13. Let's use our alphas, we can this time write at least with the two alpha values instead of alpha one and alpha two, let's say five and two. Now let's write our prior distribution. We know it's a beta. So we're going to use a lambda function for that. That is going to receive an X and we are going to use the beta distribution from SciPy. So this will receive X as an input and our alphas. Okay, similarly, our likelihood remember that the likelihood when it's normalized, it is a, another beta distribution, but the parameters were the number of heads plus one and the number of tails plus one. These were the parameters of the likelihood and the posterior was another beta distribution with parameters alpha zero plus the number of heads plus one, right? And alpha one plus the number of tails. So here you see that the prior only has our alphas as parameters, then the likelihood is only relying on the data and the posterior is combining the data and our prior beliefs. So let's plot these three functions. We are going to use NumPy line space again. So this will go between zero and one again because the posterior is a distribution for the parameter theta given the data. So it's still a distribution on the probability of heads. That means it goes between zero and one. So here we will plot t and our prior of t. Let's use a red color for the prior and the label is going to be prior. Let's write the whole distribution. So we are going to need here our expression for theta. Let me copy this from here.
So this is one string, right? Here is the second string. Now we need to continue with the third string to close the whole thing. So let's mention the distribution and the parameters. And here is going to be alphas. Here we are closing the distribution, then with this we close the string, and with this we close the whole plot. So let's see if this works. Let me add the legend. Okay, we have one extra parenthesis. I think it have it now. Okay, works. So let's add the other functions. This is going to be the likelihood. Let's use a black color here. So the likelihood is P of D given theta, and the parameters are an H plus one and an T plus one. Let's see if it works. Works, right? Now let's add the posterior. So this is the probability of theta given the data. So that we need to add this here, right? And the parameters are an H plus alpha zero and T in here plus alpha one. So let's run this. Oh, let me change the color for, let's use green here. Here we go. Let's analyze this a little bit. You see the prior is shifted to the right and the data or the likelihood is telling us that we should expect a probability around 0 0.5. The posterior is somewhere in the middle because it's considering both informations. So it's not 100% believing on the data, it is shifted towards the prior a little bit. So if we change our parameters, and instead of having five and, and two, we have five and five, meaning that the prior is more balanced, then we see that the posterior start believing more to the data, or in other words, there's more agreement between the prior and the likelihood or the data, meaning that it's easier for the posterior to agree in something close to 0 0.5. So let's be more extreme. Let's say that the data is telling us that the number of heads is way bigger than the number of tails, meaning that the data is telling us we should mostly believe that the probability is around 0 0.7, but the prior is telling us, you know, a priori you need to think that theta is around 0 0.5. Sorry, let's actually, I, I will, I like to plot uh, data here, build this label. Here we go. The prior is telling us stay close to 0 0.5. The likelihood or the data is telling us, you know, your data is saying that the probability of heads of your coin is around 0 0.7. Then the posterior is again somewhere in the middle. But if we add a stronger prior to the left, meaning that the prior should tell us that the number of tails is much bigger. Let's add more imaginary counts in the tails side. So we shift the prior to the left. Now you can see that the posterior also moved a little bit to the left. And now the posterior is believing that the probability of theta, given the data, considering the prior and the likelihood, is again somewhere close to 0 0.5.